The growth juggernaut that is chip giant AMD continues to roll right along. Powered by market share gains and leading chip technology that is securing higher prices, AMD saw second quarter sales surge 99 percent from a year ago. Operating profits skyrocketed 380 percent from last year. The company also hiked its full year sales and gross margin outlooks. Joining me for more now on the company's AMD CEO, Dr. Lisa Su. Lisa, always good to speak with you here. So you said in the earnings release, your company is growing faster than the market. Break that, break that down. Why is that happening? Yeah, absolutely. Brian, um, great to see you. Good to be with you guys this morning. And, uh, you know, we had a very strong second quarter. Uh, I think what we're seeing is just very strong customer uh, customer demand overall in the market across um, our computing segments, whether that be, you know, PCs, gaming and data center. And on top of that, we're seeing a strong customer preference for um, AMD products. So we're excited about that. I mean, we had a very strong second quarter uh, with uh, significant growth and we were able to also uh, guide up for the full year. So, um, you know, we, we were quite uh, pleased with that. Can these types of growth rates for an AMD continue? Well, I, you know, I will say that, you know, when we started the year, uh, we thought we were, were, were going to grow significantly. So when we started the year, we thought we would grow 37 percent, which, um, you know, I thought was a good number. But what we found is as we've gone through the year, a couple of things, right? One is, um, as I said, the demand for computing is just exploding everywhere. I think, you know, whether it's um, in PCs where you're working from home, schooling from home or now returning to office, um, you know, people want, um, you know, uh, better devices or uh, particularly in the data center uh, where there's just this um, incredible need for, uh, you know, more capability, um, all of the collaboration that we're doing and, and all of the you know business intelligence. So I think that's strong underlying demand. And then on top of that, you know, we continue with um, great products and in this market, it really really is about the products and that's what we've been focused on. So we're, we're very pleased with the growth. Uh, we were um, happy that we could upgrade um, our uh, growth um, estimates as we've gone through the year. And that says a lot about uh, the portfolio. There have been some concerns about PC demand slowing, I would suppose, as, as we all go back to the office and go back to our pre-pandemic lives. But it doesn't sound like you're seeing that. Well, you know, I would first say, um, you know, last year was a very strong year for uh, for PCs um, in terms of growth. This year is also a very strong year in terms of PCs for growth. Now, there are, you know, some, um, you know, supply chain issues that um, the entire market is working through. Um, I think we have navigated through those well, and we continue to, um, you know, work with all of our uh, customers, OEM partners, as well as the supply chain to do that. Uh, but we are seeing very strong end user demand. And at the end of the day, um, that's what you want to do, right? Provide new devices to people who um, are really wanting more capability. Lisa, you really had the, the comment of, of the earnings season, at least so far for me. You said on the conference call, you're fighting for every socket. How competitive is it right now in the chip space? Well, I think computing is just a very, very competitive market. I mean, you know, we are all about pushing the bleeding edge of performance. Uh, we make these decisions on what we're going to put in our products, you know, really like three to five years in advance. And so, yeah, it's extremely competitive. Um, that being the case, it's always been competitive. I don't think it's any different today than it was before. Um, it's always been competitive. It's all about putting um, a strong roadmap together. And we've been making these investments um, for a number of years. And we're very excited, not just about you know, the products that were, um, were are in market this year, because, you know, we have some great products in market this year, but we're also very excited about what we have in the future and, you know, how we're taking advantage of latest generation uh, process technology and new architectures, you know, our, uh, you know, big CPU uh, product launch next year will be Zen 4, which is in five nanometer technology. So yeah, this is all about pushing the bleeding edge. And, you know, that's what we do at AMD. Take us through that product roadmap for 2022. How will the chips next year that you're coming out with, how will they be different versus this year in terms of performance and will they be sold at higher prices? Well, um, you know, this year um, our products are primarily on seven nanometer technology, and uh, you know we have our, our CPUs, our Ryzen CPUs, our um, you know um, Epic server CPUs, as well as our uh, you know new graphics and gaming cards, and those are all in seven nanometer technology. As we go into next year, we're going to launch our uh, next set of products, uh, which are you know upgraded in architecture, upgraded in design, and we will also be upgrading um, our CPU lineup um, into five nanometer technology, particularly in the data center. 
And the data center is all about performance. It's all about performance. It's about total cost of ownership. It's being able to do more in the same footprint. And so uh, we're excited about what um, that means for us. Um, you know, obviously there's a, it is a very competitive market, but you know, we believe that um, you know, we're at leadership today and we intend to keep that leadership going forward. Give us some good news here, Lisa. We've been talking about it all morning long. The chip shortage, it continues. Is there any light at the end of the tunnel that this will in fact end sometime in our lifetimes? <laughs> <laughs> well, Brian, what I can say for sure is that the entire semiconductor industry has been you know, working hard over the last couple of quarters uh, to ramp up production. I mean, the, you know, the demand has been through the roof. Um, we've been putting a lot of capacity. We've been working with our, um, with our primary partners to really optimize that capacity. Um, we have seen improvements in the supply chain. That's one of the reasons we were able to exceed our second quarter uh, results as well as guide up for the full year. Um, I think it's still tight as we go through this year, but I think as you've heard, um, there are improvements. You know, we're improving every quarter. We're, we're shipping more product every quarter. And as we go through the end of this year and certainly into next year, I think things will, um, you know, will improve. One company you are shipping product to is Tesla. So you have uh, struck a partnership, you're working with them, you're putting chips inside their infotainment systems. Elon Musk said this week uh, on his earnings call, he can't get enough chips. Is there an opportunity for AMD to gain more share of Tesla's business? Well, we're super excited about uh, the partnership with Tesla. I think it's an example of where uh, you know we have leading edge technology and there's a need for some of this consumer technology to really cross over into um, other markets. So, you know, the idea that you can do AAA gaming, um, you know, on the road, I think is uh, very exciting. So we're uh, very pleased to be in the uh, the updated Model S and Model X. And we do believe this is a growth driver for us, um, you know, as we go forward. So, uh, you know, it's an exciting area for us. Lisa, perhaps you, could, you can give us a 20,000 foot view here. We're focusing a lot of jo on jobs uh, in America right now and, and how they might come back or, or in some industries, why they may not come back. Are you having difficulty hiring the, the tech uh, experienced folks that you need to service uh, the demand really that is off the charts for your company? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we're all about our people and, you know, our engineers are really the, the foundation of how we, uh, you know, build on those next generation products. Um, I will say that um, I'm extremely pleased with um, how we're able to recruit. Uh, you know, we've been hiring thousands of people each year as we ramp up our R&D capability. And, um, you, know, it's, you know, it's always a competitive market for labor as well, but I do believe we have um, a lot of great engineers and people want to be part of an exciting story. And so, you know, what we say is, um, you know, we have um, a ton to do and a ton to learn at AMD. And so we have been able to uh, you know, recruit just great people. Is there a difference between hiring in the U.S. as opposed to overseas? Well, I, I think we, we, we have a global company, so we hire um, across the globe. But, you know, hiring the U.S. is, you know, very important. We do a lot of our, um, our key, um, you know, architecture and designs uh, here. And so, um, yes, I think the, the focus here is on making sure that we have skilled, uh, a skilled labor force. And we hire both, you know, new college grads as well as um, experienced uh, employees that, um, that want to be in the computing field. All right, I'll leave it there. AMD CEO, Dr. Lisa Sue, good to see you fighting for every socket. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon.